Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt from Keller, Texas. Today is Friday, October 11th, 2019. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, it seems like we hear all these governments talking about doing away with cash. We're seeing all these cryptocurrencies and uh, bitcoins and online currency and you know so many people you can pay with Apple Pay you can pay with Venmo this that and the other we are we being conditioned to accept the mark of the beast because you know the Bible tells us this is coming um, Revelation 13 interesting that it's chapter 13 speaking of the beast the Antichrist um, Revelation 13, verse 14 says, And deceives them which dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had the power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and and caused that as many as would not worship the beast, uh, the image of the beast, should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. This mark of the beast, without it you can't buy or sell would make life very difficult on planet Earth, wouldn't it? Now, we've all read that passage. We've all thought about this, that, or the other. You know, there's so many things that could be implemented as the mark. RFID chips, for one thing. People are already being chipped, and it's going right here in this flesh of skin between their thumb and their forefinger in their right hand. There's companies in Wisconsin. You can see them on Facebook. They're, they're showing shirts saying, I got chipped. So their employer can track them. It's their password. It's their key to entering doors. It's It's got all their vital information on it. So they don't need to carry cards and keys and all kinds of things. Think about going to the grocery store. You know, you go, you grab all your favorite foods, you load up your cart, you get in line. Your card's declined. A little embarrassing. You know, maybe you get mad. You're like, wait, I, I know I've got enough money in there to cover this. So you, you're like, okay, I'll be right back. You go to the ATM, you get some money out, but oh, guess what? You can't. So you go to your bank, storm in there. Hey, how come I can't access my money? You hear, well, you you didn't accept the proper form of identification. You didn't take the mark. You, you you didn't say yes to this thing that's required. Think about it. You won't be able to do anything. You can't put gas in your car. You can't pay your bills. You can't pay your mortgage. You can't pay your rent. Oh, and yeah, you're not even getting a paycheck from your employer because you didn't accept what they said you had to have in order to do so. U.S. dollars, no longer valid, not accepted anywhere. Instead, you have to have this mark in your right hand or in your forehead to be able to buy or sell. That's what it's going to look like, people. And it seems like we're being conditioned more and more to accept this. People all over the world have already been chipped. Thousands of people. They're using it to pay at the grocery store. They, they wave it over the, the um, checkout when, when they're done. Instead of having a credit card, they enter their information, their password, whatever. They just wave their hand over it. Nope, oh, done. They use it to open their cars, um, to open the doors to their house, all kinds of things. Now, please don't misunderstand. I am not saying the RFID chip is the mark of the beast, but I am saying that it is an instrument that could be used to implement the mark of the beast, okay? RFID chips have been around for decades. They're getting smaller, about the size of a grain of rice. Okay, they have maybe not decades, at least one decade they've been around. Walmart's been using them for at least 14, 15 years. 
instead of barcodes. Um, so suddenly people who have had great credit and had money in the bank suddenly find themselves being poor and unable to buy anything. Uh, but oh, there's, there's a solution to the problem. Just accept the mark. Now understand, they're not going to be marketing it as the mark of the beast. They're not going to be saying, line up, get your mark of the beast here. It's going to be sold to you as the greatest security device ever, the most lucrative, iconic, and everyone has to have it kind of thing. They're going to be lining up like sheep to the slaughter to get this thing. Don't you do it. If they implement something that they say, yeah, your cash is no good, you have to have this in order to buy anything. If you see that, come on the scene. Please don't do it. Now, I know you might be saying, well, Daryl, how am I going to eat? How am I going to live? What am I going to do? Do you remember Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt? They were wandering in the desert for 40 years. In a desert. There were no 7-Elevens at every other palm tree. There was no convenience store on the corner to pop in and go get a Slurpee and a roasted chicken. They were in the desert. God provided for them. For 40 years. Understand something, there was in excess of probably 5 million Israelites. Men, women, and children. Five million for 40 years in the desert. The Bible says their shoes didn't even wear out. People, I can wear out a pair of shoes in less than a year. And I'm not walking in the desert. <laughs> we have to trust. God will provide. God will sustain us. Um, there's coming a day when this will be a reality. Now, it might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen next week. But it's going to happen, because the Bible says it will. You know, changes happen all the time. Who remembers 8-track tapes? I had 8-track tape players in my car, in my truck, in on my ledge in my bedroom. Then came, you know, cassette tapes. They were smaller, easier to carry. You could put more into a little carrying case to keep in your car. Um... <laughs> And these kind of changes happen. Then they went to CDs, right? Nobody asked me. Uh, this kind of thing was forced upon you. Now you had to buy compact discs, right? Seems even the compact disc is, has gone away because now we have iHeart, Radio, Spotify, um, Pandora, all these places where we can get music relatively cheap, right? What about TVs? Did you have an analog TV when it went strictly digital? Did you have a choice in the matter? What about cell phones? I, I had one of the first cell phones back in 1991. It was an analog, had the green screen, Motorola flip phone. It's pretty cool. I can remember walking down the street in California, talking on the phone, people looking at me like, who's this guy? He must be rich. He's got a cell phone. <laughs> pretty funny. Um, I was in real estate. Uh, I felt like I needed to have one. And now it's like everybody's got them. Little kids, little five, six-year-olds, they're walking around with cell phones. You're like, wow, my children, they don't know life without a cell phone. This world is going to look different. There's coming a time on this earth where the line will be drawn in the sand and you better choose whose side you're on. You're going to be on the side of God or you're going to be against him. People, I tell you these things not to scare you, but to inform you, to educate you, to make sure you're aware. Because there's a lot of things happening in the world. It's easy to lose focus. It's easy to get distracted. <clears throat> the mark won't just be 
a system of worship. It's a system of control. You know, the devil's not God, but he's been wanting to be ever since he got kicked out of heaven. All he can do is try to mimic God, which is what he attempts to do with this mark. The devil's been wanting to be worshipped ever since we hear that in Isaiah, what is it, Isaiah 14, when he was kicked out of heaven, a third of the angels went with him, which again, just, just baffles me. <clears throat> what were those angels thinking that decided, you know what, I'm going to leave God's perfect kingdom and follow this guy that got kicked out? What kind of mindset would you have to have? It's amazing to me. Angels in heaven saying, you know what? We're going to leave God and follow this guy who wants to be worshipped like God. He wants to be like God, but he's not God. We're going to follow him instead of the true God. I don't get that. I don't understand, you know, was there some kind of chatter, you know, in heaven? They're all saying there, oh, look, oh, God's going to kick Lucifer out because he wants to be worshipped. What, what should we do? What should we do? I think we should go with Lucifer. I kind of like Lucifer. He's a good looking guy. He can sing really well. You know, let, let, let's go with him. He's got some great ideas. I mean, what? How did this come about? What angel in God's perfect kingdom is going to say, I think I want to leave here? Why would you want to leave God's perfect kingdom for anybody? Mm. You know, God marks those that belong to him throughout scripture. Deuteronomy 6 verse 8. Ezra 9, verse 4, 2 Corinthians 1, verses 21 and 22, Ephesians 1, verse 13, Revelation 7, verse 3, several places God marks those who belong to him. Satan counters that system. As this choice to a lot of the world's problems, the world's economic problems, you know, the current world's economic, economic system, is currently being dismantled through unmanageable debt, corruption. By the time the mark of the beast is introduced as an alternative, it'll pretty much be left as the only practical solution. There's going to be this man saying, look at this, look what I came up with. Here's the perfect solution to the world's problems. This will change it all. It guarantees your security. It guarantees your, your privacy. It guarantees your ability to buy and sell, and you can do all this. I mean, the United States is some $21 trillion in debt currently. Um, a lot of people in America have become dependent on the entitlement programs that our country puts out. All these illegals coming in for free health care, free medical, free dental, free education, free housing, free this, free that. Democrats are giving some $3,700 a month to these illegal immigrants. I work three jobs. <laughs> I work tirelessly, and I, I barely do that well with all the stuff I do. You know, you've seen what's happened in places like Greece and Paris and London if, if these strict financial measures are put in place. Hmm. Ah, oh, boy. We've seen Brazil and Russia, China, France wanting to move away from the dollar into some kind of digital currency. Causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. This Antichrist, this son of perdition, who shows up with the false prophet, becomes indwelt by Satan himself. A number associated with this beast, Revelation 13, 18. 666. <clears throat> hmm. 666. 
There's been so many times people have been like, oh, well, this person's the Antichrist, that person's the Antichrist, through speculation. In Ezra 2, verse 13, it talks about the children of Adonicum, 660 and 6. Pretty much the only person in Scripture that that number was associated with. Clearly, he was not the Antichrist. Um, Paul said, Second uh, Thessalonians, Paul gives us a great glimpse of what it's going to look like. Second Thessalonians 2, starting in verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let me just reiterate, God doesn't have to say, I'm God. Everybody will know. Only a fake, only a counterfeit, only a false God would have to say, I'm God, worship me. Because I promise you, when the real God appears, every knee will bow. You won't be able to stand in the presence of the Almighty. So if you hear someone say, I'm God, worship me, and you're still on your feet, he's a liar. Just keep that in mind. Now listen, I know there's so many that say, you know what, Daryl, when this comes, we won't be here. We'll be raptured out of here. Now listen. I don't want to cause a rapture argument. I don't want to cause a rapture debate. Honestly, the reason I haven't made any kind of rapture videos is because in the end, none of us know for sure. None of us know if it's pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-millennial, post-millennial, all these <clears throat> different things. You know, I grew up believing in the pre-trib rapture. Because the preacher told me that's what it was going to be like. Figured, hey, he knows better than I do. He's smarter than me. He's studied this, this book longer than I have. <clears throat> but now, after some 50 years of reading it, and studying it, and teaching it, <clears throat> even Jesus says, no one knows but the Father when Christ returns. Now, I know there's those who say, oh, the rapture and the return of Christ are two different things. And again, please, I'm not trying to start an argument. That is not what we as Christians should do, arguing about doctrine uh, or opinion. It's not really doctrine, it's more opinion. Um, I have to go with what the words of Jesus are. When Christ himself said in Matthew 13, when he talked about the parable of the wheat and the tares. Matthew 13, verse 37, he answered and said unto them, this is after the disciples asked him, said, hey, explain to us the parable of the wheat and the tares. Jesus said, okay. Matthew 13, 37, he answered and said unto them, he that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear." Jesus is telling me that the wicked ones are pulled out of the world. Plain and clear, Jesus said, this is what it'll be like at the end of the world. The wicked ones are gathered out first. Now I know it sounds 
nice and comforting that, oh, we're not going to be here for the trouble. From what I've read of my Lord, my Creator, I see Him protecting people through the storm, not removing them from it. Just saying. And again, I'm not trying to create an argument. I'm just showing you what the Word says. It's always been astounding to me that Christ himself chose to use the very words after the tribulation of those days. Then you'll see the Son of Man. Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. So I have a hard time still thinking, oh, God's just going to take me out of here. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown into the furnace. They were thrown in the fire. Nebuchadnezzar said, didn't I throw three in there? But I see four, and the fourth looks like the Son of God. That's because it was Christ in that fire with them. And I think God shows us these examples, so he'll make sure that we know that no matter what we're going through, he's going to be right there with us. And I can't help but think that all these people that believe in this pre-tribulation rapture theory, when they realize they're in the tribulation, how many of those will fall away from the faith? Because what they thought was going to happen didn't happen. Just my thoughts. Just my thoughts. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off on a tangent there. And again, I'm not arguing anyone's opinion. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. There are certain doctrines I will not bow on. Christ was born of a virgin. Christ lived a life without sin. Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Jesus Christ is God in human flesh. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He rose again on the third day, just like he said he would. And yes, he is coming back again for us, just like he said. Those things I won't bend on. You cannot convince me otherwise on any of those points. Now, I'm always open to hearing people's thoughts based on Scripture. I just can't help but think that Jesus would have told us plainly if that were the case. Um, we're not to take this mark. Like I said, they won't market it as, hey, line up and get your mark of the devil here. It's going to be something that is necessary. It's going to be like, hey, here's the answer to all your problems. Line up to get this. This will this will solve everything. Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, that this time at the end will be unlike the world has ever seen or will ever see again. In Matthew 24, um... <laughs> 24 verse 21 for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be nor ever shall be Jesus said in Revelation 22 12 behold I come quickly my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be The Bible's very clear. Revelation 13, 16 through 17, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, this is Revelation 14, verse 9, 10 through 11, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Please. If you're here when they present this thing, please don't take it. Your eternal life depends on it. We need to strengthen each other. We need to sharpen each other. You know, the devil loves nothing more than to see Christians arguing with each other. 
also keep in mind that leading someone astray is something God hates. Um, it's something God hates. Uh, let's see, trying to get to the scripture I was thinking of. Um, mm, I'm going to turn to it right as soon as I click the stop button. Bible talks about seven things God hates and sowing discord among the brethren is the last one he speaks of. Sowing discord, causing arguments. Um, come on, Daryl, you know where that is. Anyway. <laughs> We need to make sure that we have our eyes open and we're seeking after his wisdom and we're seeking after him and not seeking after our own vainglory. Okay, it's Proverbs 6, verses 16 through 19. A proud look, a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. Tell me what's more innocent than an unborn baby. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness that speaks lies. And he that sows discord among the brethren. These are things God hates. Don't take the mark. No matter how cool they make it look, no matter how amazing it sounds, no matter how much it seems like you have to have it, let's trust God and trust that he will provide, he will guide, he will protect. No matter what. I trust him. How about you? I love you guys. God bless you. Good Lord willing. I'll see you again soon.